to the Fit for Privacy podcast with Punit Bhatia. This is the podcast for those who care about their privacy. Here, your host, Punit Bhatia, has conversations with industry leaders about their perspectives, ideas, and opinions relating to privacy, data protection, and related matters. Be aware that the views and opinions expressed in this podcast are not legal advice. Let us get started. Hello and welcome to the Data Privacy Day special in the Fit for Privacy podcast. Well, you know that Data Privacy Day or Data Protection Day or International Data Protection Day, whichever way you call it, is celebrated on January 28th. Yes, January 28th is a Data Protection Day and it is celebrated as a Data Protection Day since 2007. So almost now 15 years that it has been the case. On this special day, most companies would run, that at least I work with, would run an awareness campaign to make their staff aware on data protection matters. Some of them would run an awareness campaign, some of them would run a communication campaign, some of them would run a training campaign, what's in the name, end of the day. Most companies tend to inform or take the opportunity to inform individuals, that is their staff, about how personal data should be protected and some of them also conduct a privacy culture survey to ascertain what is the culture of privacy or how far how deep rooted is the culture of privacy in their organization well that's what most companies do in this fit for privacy podcast what we are going to do is we are going to look at the top 10 fines that have happened in the data protection regime or the EU GDPR regime so far and dissect them from three perspectives. What was the fine? That is, which company was fined, how much it was fined, when it was fined, for why it was fined. Slightly go deep into those reasons why it was fined and then dig deep into how can you avoid those fines. So take it a learning, take a step back, learn from those fines and take necessary action on this data protection day to prevent you and your company from any fines. That's what we are going to do. So let's get started. Notebookbilliger.de This is an electronic retailer in Germany and they were fined 10 million euro plus in January 2021. Yes, notebookbilliger.de, also known as NBB, a large retailer in Germany, was fined 10 million euros for use of CCTV in a non-compliant way. According to the reports, they were keeping the recording of CCTV for 60 plus days. And they were doing it for last two years already. According to them, this was necessary to prevent theft as they could record and monitor employees as well as customers through CCTV. Sounds logical, sounds relevant, but not for authorities, as authorities have often taken a stance that CCTV or video surveillance should be necessary and proportionate. So if you're keeping records for 60 days, it is not necessary, it is not proportionate according to the authorities. That's why they were fined 10 million euro in EU GDPR context. So what can you do? Well, there's some guidance from the UK ICO. There is also guideline from CNIL. There's also guideline from the Germany data protection authorities. The best way is look at the guidance and make sure if you're doing video surveillance, if you're installing CCTV cameras, those are proportionate and necessary to the purpose for which you are doing and do it only when strictly necessary and also check other laws because when you talk about video surveillance it's not just EU GDPR in most countries at least most European countries there are other privacy laws or other video surveillance laws which dictate what needs to be done and how video surveillance needs to be done most important always do a data protection impact assessment, document the risks, document the necessity, document the proportionality and keep the recording for a minimum period. Most video surveillance cameras have an auto feature in which 
the video recording is auto deleted after x number of days <clears throat> 60 days is too long some countries it's 24 hours in some companies it's 72 hours so find out what is relevant in your region apply that and most likely you can avoid this fine for video surveillance Vodafone Italia a company in Italy was fined 12.3 million euros in November 2020 on account of various breaches of the EU GDPR and this could have been avoided now let's look at it what was the reason why it was done and how it could have been avoided so when Vodacom Italia was issued a fine there were a range of EU GDPR violations GDPR violations of article 5 6 and 7 and when we talk about article 5 it is about principles relating to processing of personal data 6 is about lawfulness of processing and 7 is about conditions of consent so pretty much the very basics of EU GDPR and when we talk about article 16 or 21 16 is about the right for rectification that is allowing the individuals to modify their data when it is incorrect which is should be a straightforward then article 21 25 32 and 33 article 21 is about right to object 22 is about automated uh, decision making 23 is about restrictions so these are all relating to the rights of individual and then article 32 or 33 let me look at it because it's 32 is about security of processing so that's about the technical and organizational measures which an organization must implement and 33 is about notification of a data breach so all these seem to be simple and straightforward requirements the core of EU GDPR the basics of EU GDPR and it Vodafone Italia was fined on these so how could these have been avoided 12 million is a, euros is a lot of money how could you avoid that in that much you can certainly implement technical and organizational measures you can implement security measures you can ensure that there is a process for rights you can ensure that the principles of EU GDPR that is purpose limitation data minimization and everything else is upheld but how do you make sure this is being done because maybe you have done a EU GDPR project already three years or four years ago. The simple way is conduct an audit. Put in a monitoring control framework in your company. Ask the first line of defense that is the business to do a self-control assessment. So you give them the controls, they do the control, self-control assessment. They document what they have done and prove the test of design and test of effectiveness. Test of design meaning they have put the process. Test of effectiveness means that the process is working. And if they can demonstrate it, then there is proof that things are working well. And if there are things to fix, you fix it yourself before a fine comes along. Recently, the Italian Data Protection Authority fined a company named Wind for about 17 million euros for data protection violations. What were these violations? These were relating to consent. These was related to data protection compliance when marketing and allowing opportunity to unsubscribe and collecting data in a lawful manner. So what was not done here? What was not done here was the enforcement regulator found that they received complaints about marketing communications. Reportedly, they were spam with ads without the consent of individuals. There was incorrect details leaving consumers unable to subscribe. Now, these are simple things and they don't cost 17 million euros to implement. So, how could you have avoided these things or how can you avoid these fines well first and foremost collect data in a lawful manner and when you are marketing know that you have a legal basis legitimate purpose for processing of marketing activities you ask for consent if necessary and give users the opportunity to opt out 
and when you are asking consent ask consent in a granular manner that is if you are asking consent for marketing purposes or third party products purposes or security purposes or sending a newsletter all these are separate purposes so one consent for all of them will not do second thing is have your privacy notice or privacy statement up to date describe what you are collecting why you are collecting what you are doing with it and so on and in the marketing communication that goes out provide a means to unsubscribe easily not hidden not grayed out not that somebody has to go down find out very small font those are not good practices be transparent be upfront and let the right users stay with you today we are going to look at a fine on marriott hotels which was worth 20 million euros by uk's ico this relates to the time when marriott hotels acquired starwood so starwood reservation systems were acquired by marriott and the data regulator that is the uk ico found that necessary due diligence at the time of acquisition was not done that's why they find 12 million of course if you remember the original fine was 123 million but it was revised later on so what happened there were about 300 million plus guest records to be precise 383 million guest records of which 30 million eu guest residents were there these were exposed because hotel chains guest reservation system or database system was compromised personal data like guests name addresses passport numbers and payment card information was exposed and all this when investigated was found that it was because of starwood group's reservation system in 2014 and marriott had acquired starwood in 2016 the finding was that enough due diligence was not done at the time of acquisition so now the gdpr or data protection matters do not only matter to your company but they also matter in your business decisions that is when you are acquiring a company you do necessary due diligence make sure they are data protection compliant and you are not acquiring new risks when you are acquiring new business how do you do that you put in place processes you put in place a dedicated team as part of your acquisition team to do the due diligence on data protection matters do a kind of audit that this company that you are acquiring is compliant with data protection matters or where they are not compliant you know the risk up front and you can take mitigating actions and make a decision in context of overall costs because if data protection fine is a risk that needs to be included in your due diligence costs so that's as simple as that so british airways was fined about 20 million euros to be precise 22 million euros for failing to protect or failing to implement necessary technical and organizational measures which led to a breach So this happened in 2018 the breach happened in 2018 the original fine was 238 million pounds but ICO later revised it to 26 million dollars or 22 million euro so what happened back in 2018 was that the systems were compromised the breach affected or affected about 400000 customers their data was hacked when i say data was hacked it was relating to the login details the payment card information travelers names and addresses all of this is personal data now how could it have been avoided according to ico it was preventable and the british airways did not take necessary security measures or did not put in enough security measures in their systems in their networks and on data so that means if you have to prevent such fines you must be implementing technical and organizational measures that is the security measures on your systems on your processes on your data and if you do that 
then you can protect yourself against such fines and against such breaches. So security first approach, stricter data protection policies and stricter data protection controls. While most companies do the policy bit, they do the procedures, but they fail to check in how those policies or procedures are being implemented or not in reality. How do you do that is two ways. One is you hire an external audit company to do an audit and tell you whether the processes, the policies are being complied with or not. Well, that's an expensive course of action, of course. Another option is you have an internal audit team, but that also cannot be done every year or every two years in each and every entity if you are operating in multiple countries. A simpler approach that most companies that I work with take is, we call it a risk control self-assessment. So you have a policy, you identify some controls, put those controls in place and ask the business to perform a self-assessment. A self-assessment means I as a business department head look at those controls and say what are we doing and I do it at two levels. One is at design level, so test of design that is for example transparency is enabled in interactions with users so enabling transparency means there's a privacy policy or privacy notice in place so if i put a privacy notice in place on the website the test of design is met same way if i'm giving a link to that privacy notice on different forms when data is being collected it is again a test of design tick but is it effective is the policy good enough now how do you check that that is called test of effectiveness. In test of effectiveness, you ask them, are the purposes of processing listed? Are, so to ask questions like this, very specific, very detailed questions to ascertain that the policy actually contains what it should contain and users are getting informed about actually the things which they should. And of course, you can also do a random audit on this point. So when you do test of design, the business says, yes, we are doing a test of effectiveness. They demonstrate that the process or the procedure or the policy is working and if you do all that there's a greater chance that you are likely to be compliant and the risk of a fine like what happened with British Airways or anyone else would be lesser. In January 2020 Telecom Italia was fined 27.8 million euros. Yes, Telecom Italia was fined 27.8 million euros in January 2020 for various infractions, various violations of EU GDPR as found by the Italian Data Protection Authority. So what were these? They found that the marketing was very aggressive. They were unlawful actions. Unlawful actions meaning overly aggressive marketing strategy wherein millions of individuals were bombarded with promotional calls, unsolicited communications, and some of them were on contact and exclusion lists. So not only are you aggressively marketing, aggressively pushing your marketing strategy, but also to those who have asked not to be disturbed, who have asked that they be unsubscribed from such lists. So that's why they were fined 27.8 million. The question is, how can you avoid this? Well, first and foremost, put in a process in which you know who has given you consent for marketing and who has asked not to give you or not to send those emails. Those who have asked not to send those emails, please never ever send them emails. And for those who have asked, there also be reasonable, be proportionate. That is, don't be aggressive. Maybe ask if they like to be contacted on phone, if they like to be contacted on email, if they like, how often they like to be contacted, collect that information and based on that information, contact them. I know you'll be thinking that your scope of marketing database would go down. Yes, that's true. That's one way of looking at it. But the effectiveness of marketing database would also go up because you will have customers who want to be contacted and who have given you consent. That means your marketing department, your customer care department, spend time on those who are interested in your products. So the best way to avoid a fine like what Telecom Italia went through is to put in a marketing strategy, marketing approach that is aligned with the EU GDPR, 
having lists, collecting consent, and asking users through a preference center, a privacy setting center, using which they choose if they want to be contacted or not. Fashion retailer H&M was fined 35 million euros in Germany in October 2020 by Data Protection Authority of Hamburg. Why? Well, this was another case for video surveillance or installation of video cameras. What did H&M do? H&M was found to be monitoring several hundred employees. After employees took vacation or sick leave, they were required to attend return to work meetings. Some of these meetings were recorded and accessible to over 50 managers in H&M. That's why they were fined 35 million euros. Because when these managers had access to these recordings, they gained broad knowledge of their employees' private lives, ranging from some harmless family issues and religious beliefs. Now, you know, relig profiling or collecting religious information, religious belief data is sensitive data. So you're collecting sensitive data in video surveillance. Don't do that. So how do you protect yourself against such fines? Well, you know that EU GDPR does not prohibit you from video surveillance, but it certainly prohibits excessive or unreasonable video surveillance. In addition to EU GDPR, most EU countries have laws for video surveillance. So in combination with those laws and the data protection laws, perform a data protection impact assessment, document the risks, document the necessary actions, evaluate the necessity, proportionality and legitimacy of what you are going to do and then decide to do it or not do it. Google was fined 50 million euros in 2019. This remained one of the largest GDPR fines for some time. And the case related to how Google was sharing information in the privacy notice, the way consent was being collected, the way personal advertisement being conducted and the types of data processing. So how can you be on the right side and not fall into a fine like this? The simple way is if you are doing personalized advertising or personalized marketing, ask for consent. For other marketing and communication, provide an opportunity to opt out that is unsubscribe. Conduct a data protection impact assessment so that you know what risks you are taking and where more controls or more action need to be taken. Publish in your privacy notice the personal data you are processing, the reasons for processing, what is being done with it and what about opt out explain all that and in your communication in your marketing communication always include all the details around what personal data is collected how it is collected what is done with it that is provide a link to the privacy notice and more importantly provide an easy way out that is let them unsubscribe don't hide it don't put it gray and don't put it in black or somewhere that they cannot see it don't do that Put it up front, put it clear, let them opt out if they want to. No point in keeping users who are not interested to be receiving your email communications. 200 million euros is a lot of money. Yes, 200 million euros is a lot of money and that is what was the amount of fine, rather 225 million euros that WhatsApp was asked to pay by Irish Data Protection Authority. And we all know that this is amongst one of the largest fines in EU GDPR regime. So what went wrong? Well, as per the Irish Data Protection Authority, WhatsApp privacy notice failed to explain their data processing and data collection practices. It failed to sufficiently elaborate on the usage of legitimate interest as a means, as a basis for processing of personal data. Now the question is, how can your company prevent yourself from such a violation? Well, first and foremost, in your privacy notice and in your data collection practices, 
be absolutely certain what you are collecting, why you are collecting, what you are doing with it, what basis are you doing it with on. Document all that in the privacy notice and be transparent to individuals. If you are going to use legitimate and trust as a basis for processing of personal data, then conduct a proportionality or a necessity test. That is, make sure that your legitimate interest does not override individuals' rights and freedoms. How do you do that? Perform a necessity or balancing test as we call it. Perform a balancing test, conduct a data protection impact assessment and you would have good insights on what you can do and what you cannot do. And of course, then you need to listen to your privacy professional or privacy expert in your company. It seems like in case of WhatsApp, it was not clear or unclear and that's why they were fined. Would you like to be in that category? Certainly not. Because doing all this does not cost 225 million euros. Certainly far less. Far, far less. When we talk about the biggest fines in EU GDPR regime, how can we not talk about Amazon's 746 million euro fine by CNIL, the French Data Protection Authority? Well, all the details on this matter are not yet available. But from what we know is that this is one of the biggest fines and it was made because the collection and sharing of personal data via cookies was not in line with EU GDPR and e-privacy directive requirements. So if you are forcing or tempting users to click yes on cookies, if you are forcing the users to opt in not giving them enough opportunities, enough options, easy options to opt out, then you are risking such a fine. So how do you avoid it is be open, be transparent and do not collect tracking data, cookie data until the user has consented. Be open and don't have confusing messages. For example, you are in, on your order page and then you say, would you like this to be uh, your added to your order? And then no thank you is so, 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 so small that the user has to find it and most users will inadvertently click yes. Or like you give them an offer saying, would you like to receive this, off, uh, this order within uh, 24 hours? Because we will give you a prime membership and in that prime membership, you will always get your orders in 24 hours. Now it sounds tempting but behind the scenes or in small text it's written that that cost may be 10 euros or 7 euros a month and it's a prime membership and you'll be billed every month. Now that's not written in big and bold text and that is unethical practices. That is not a practice which EU GDPR recommends. So don't do or don't follow practices like this. Be transparent, be upfront, tell what you are intending to do and then go ahead and do it if the user consents if your data protection officer or manager agrees with it and how do you justify it conduct a data protection impact assessment conduct necessary checks and balances and document the findings document the rationale why you do it and then do it if allowed that's the simplest way in which you can protect yourself against fines like what we talked about 746 million in case of Amazon. That's a lot of money. It doesn't cost that much to comply with GDPR and it's not worth the risk. So this was the Data Privacy Day special wherein we looked at the top 10 fines, why they were made, when they were made, how much were they and more importantly, how can you prevent or avoid these? What actions can you take? in context of these fines. I hope this was useful. If you liked it, please do click a like, do comment, do send us an email so that we know. And if you like to do or hear episodes like these more and more, do send me an email and I will cover maybe 10 more fines and my rationale on those. So for now, celebrate the Data Privacy Day Educate your staff, inform your staff, 
and take necessary action and enjoy data protection day thank you so much and have a great day fit for privacy helps you to create a culture of privacy and manage risks by creating defining and implementing a privacy strategy that includes delivering scenario based training for your staff we also help those who are looking to get certified in cippe cipm and cipt through on demand courses that help you prepare and practice for certification exam. Want to know more? Visit www.fitforprivacy.com. That's www.fit, the number four, privacy.com. Thanks for listening. If you liked the show, feel free to share it with a friend and write a review. If you have already done so, thank you so much. And if you did not like the show, don't bother and forget about it. Take care and stay safe. Until next time, goodbye. If you have questions or suggestions, feel free to drop an email at hello at fitforprivacy.com. That's hello at F-I-T, the number four, privacy.com.